It's TGIF, so let's hop into some hot topics. In presidential news, the state of Georgia just completed its second recount at the expense of the citizens, the residents of, the, of, of Georgia, $3 million actually, in the presidential election and found no evidence of voter fraud, which indicates that president-elect Joe Biden's victory will in fact stand. What's it going to take for Trump to accept that he not only lost Georgia three times now, uh, but the electoral and popular vote also? What's it going to take out? Girl, she needs to just sit down, honey. I'm so sick of Donald Trump. But you know, it's funny though, but uh, it's amazing how this man, uh, let's just be real, a damn white man can say, look, I didn't lose and we're going to count again. He made them count three damn times. Who does that? President Obama would have never done it. Oh, they would have never had, they would have shut him down the first time. And this man just said, girl, y'all going to count until damn it, I get tired. That's cute, honey. <laughs> It's definitely white male entitlement at its finest. He just needs to let it go at this point. You know, I heard somewhere on in the Twitterverse that he's planning to throw an event at the same time as the inauguration, which would definitely be the pettiest thing of the century to add to the list of already petty things he's done. But it's time that he lets that go and retires the same way he needs to retire that little bit of hair he got left. Okay. Just let it all go. How about they said he was supposed to announce on that day that he may be running for 2024? Girl. I find it, I find this very hilarious because if you if you really want to make an analogy here, he this recount has ignited a civil war in the GOP. Like literally, the Republicans are fighting amongst themselves now. Even to the point where uh what's his name? The the, the Trump, the pro-Trump attorney Lynn Wood urges Georgia Republicans at the rally on Wednesday, not to vote in the upcoming Senate race. Like, I love it. I'm, Stay I'm home. like, yo, this is next level drama that is unprecedented. But this is the interesting part. Now, the Secretary of State told you to sit down because you lost. The Attorney General told you to sit down because you lost. And now your constituents are telling you to sit down because you are losing. So, what? What's what is it gonna take? Like I think he might need a message from somebody bigger than all of them. Who is that? God? Like God. Yeah. But a lot of people saying though too that he told Giuliani to sit down because his hair was dripping. But I don't know, child. But my thing is, honey, he just got Did y'all see Giuliani in court with that white girl that yeah. seemed drunk as hell? And she was saying she what was he like oh. you what, see that what was she on? No, she was far with the votes count. No, I bet. What did you guys do with uh, the roster? Yeah, she was all kind of wasted. They must have went to brunch before they went to the damn. Okay, you know, out of this mimosas or something. But uh, that that was crazy. Did you see Giuliani grab her wrist when Giuliani, who just a week or two ago had Beijing, whatever that was, mascara running Girl, out of the that street, was too hot. All right, now President Obama, let's talk about President Obama. He's taking a brave stance in the fight against coronavirus. The former presidents, uh, George W. Bush and Clinton, have volunteered to take the vaccine in hopes of, you know, pro proving to Americans that the vaccines can be trusted. Do you think this will convince Black Americans to take the vaccine? <laughs> I think it should. I think it should aid in our angst against not wanting to take it. And don't get me wrong, I definitely get the skepticism in our community with the Tuskegee experiments and why Black yeah. people are so skeptical about situations. But I always tell people, I do not take medical advice from people who do not have MD behind their name. So I don't care what you talked about in your church group. I don't care what you and your cousin was talking about. If you don't have any sort of medical education, I'm not having a medical conversation with you. A lot of people talking about, oh, the vaccine is too quick. It's too quick. I'm not taking it. But if Dr. Fauci say it's okay to take it, I'm with Obama. I'm going to take it. I always tell people, could it be possible that they were able to find a vaccine so quickly because this virus mimics a virus that we may possibly already have a vaccine for, and they just had to tweak one or two things in order to get it out. And I think that is probably the case, but I'm more willing to believe Dr. Fauci than I am Miss Ernestine off of Usher Board number two at Revival. So but I'm going to, if they take it, I'm going to take it. Yeah, but Q, but wasn't it the doctors, honey, back in the day gave those girls the blankets, honey, and told them to take the blankets, and they had um, the... the um, Chicken pops or what it was oh, with that was the, the that was the colonizers when they did it to the Indians the colonizers the colonizers back in the day yes they did so I mean know. I just think I just think that we've got to have sort of faith in the fact that 
society is not where it was then and that we have made some sort of progress in terms of medical integrity when it comes to minorities? Well, this is what I think. I think that, you know, luckily the Obama administration successfully handled the Ebola in America. So that gives me a little bit of confidence, but just historically as black people, we've had, we've had a lot of distrust in government backed medicine and I'm gonna yeah. have to see him take it with my eyes along with Bush and Clinton. And if it kills them, I ain't gonna take it. But if they but didn't do it, I want the same doctor that they had that they got theirs from to give me mine. But you know, and that sounds good. And, and I said I would take it once it comes, you know, because of my underlying condition. But we don't know if they really take it. That could be something down water in a vial and they could be injected. Say, oh, I got it. I took it. And your ass be falling out dead, honey, while they walking around. So, you know, it's just, it's an iffy thing. Yeah, but, uh, the, 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 I like how fast they got this together. And Q, you made some great points because it is related to SARS. It's a, it's a variation of SARS and we've been dealing with SARS, right? Um, if they can do this vaccine so fast, I need them to address a few other things. Like, in, I used to live in LA. Everybody had them cold sores on their mouth. I swear, like, I was like the only one that didn't have them. If they, in, in Atlanta, too. If they could just get that together, that could be the next thing on their list. Get the mouth, um, the mouth bumps together. Mm -hmm. Like, the vaccine for that. Uh, a mouth bump, a, a mouth bump, Claudia. You know what I'm talking about. Is that yeah. a herpes? <laughs> it's a form of it. What's that, Simplex 1? They call it that nasty woman's disease. Uh -huh. <laughs> I gotta be a nasty woman. Okay, well. we, we got some YouTube comments. Um, Betty Van Buren says, I'm a first time watcher and I love this show. And Erica Swain says, I'm a registered nurse and I'm not taking the vaccine. Oh, wow. Oh. Wow. Okay. All right, now listen, Miley Cyrus' younger sister, Noah Cyrus, is catching heat after calling conservative TV host, is she a TV host? What show is she on? Candace Owens, a nappy ass hoe. Now, Noah posted the nasty comment on her Instagram after Candace did question Harry Styles' masculinity for wearing a dress in Vogue magazine. Was Noah out of line for referring to Candace as a nappy ass hoe? <laughs> Definitely, she was out of line. And she was out of line. I don't believe I don't believe her post. She says she ain't sorry and she's not mortified. First of all, let's go with intent. You made the comment because you were trying to be derogatory. You're gonna call somebody nappy headed hoes? Nah, nope. She meant for it to be derogatory. And this is a consequence in my mind of white familiarity and comfort through the appropriation of black culture. I don't like it. If everybody that has curly hair or nappy hair stop buying her music for a year, let's see what happens then with her. That's my opinion. That's a sister. Uh, it ain't Miley Cyrus. It's a sister. So it's, it's, it's Noah it's, Cyrus. It's Noah, her sister. But she sings too. But she uh -oh. sings too. She uh -oh. yeah, She sings too. No, stop listening to her mess. Call somebody else nappy head again and see what happens. Well, she so was. She, go ahead, Q. I was going to say it's funny because Candace Owens most definitely deserves it. But that's not the phrase for Miss Cyrus to be used. Like that, that phrase rests within our community. And her apology, she said something along the lines of she did not understand the historical impact of what it is she was saying. And I'm like, Al says bullshit because your insult was very intentional. Of all the things you could have called her, ugly, bitch, stupid, bitch, crazy heifer. You went to nappy headed hoe. The only thing saving Noah Cyrus is the fact that black people really don't give a shit about Candace Owens. And therefore, Thank you. This, will blow, this will blow over by the end of tonight. We really don't care what you do to her. So Noah will be good, but just don't do it again, Noah. Yeah, but like she said, though, honey, she didn't understand it. But I love Miss Noah, baby. This girl called her a nappy hoe, and then she pleaded the field. Girl, I don't even know what I said. <laughs> but you can't say she prejudiced because her damn daddy made a song with baby Miss Lil Nas, so they not prejudiced. So she but just it, called uh, her how she saw it. <laughs> Here's the thing. White folks that want to insult people in the black community that we don't really rock with, just stay away from like the things that can make you right, seem right. we'll probably agree with you half the time because I don't like I don't agree with much of anything that Candace Owens says. Thank you. Nobody she does. She right. does deserve smoke, but when you say racist things, we can't be hypocrites and be those kind of liberals because right. that's what you say. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a lot of other things you can talk about Candace Owens. I wouldn't call her a nappy head of hoe. Uh, the edges are terrible. She's a jerk. 
She's Ball headed hoe. But she didn't call it an N word, so at least she spared that. At least she was decent enough to not call I it. I mean, that. but there was so many headed she could have called her. Ball headed hoe, thin headed hoe. Broken edge hoe, missing edge hoe, need a perm hoe, don't know how to do your hair hoe, go to yeah. bed hoe. She could have called her all kind of hoes. She just chose the wrong one. So she <laughs> just said, <laughs> Navi. So you can get her up with any of those other. Noah, you're welcome. You're welcome. A little early Christmas gift from Q. Yeah. You can, right. you can allow to call Candace Owens L, all those other things. Except nappy. We're going to take a quick break, but we come back. We're breaking down some of the biggest headlines in the news. And we're going to try not to get in trouble, but we probably will. We'll be back with more TGIF when we come back. <laughs> <laughs> Thin-haired hoe. Oh. 